Here's a look at the motor contactor switch with uh, some of the other rewiring that I did in here. Before there was these old plugs, uh, some of them were burnt out. The other one was really bad. This one's not too bad. And old switches and all that shit, which I replaced. <clears throat> um, the main thing that I started with was the motor contactor for this pump over here. It is a older Jacuzzi FM series. Beast of a unit. And over here we have the main power coming in, 220 or 240 volts. Um, it's rooted to this uh, sub panel over here. This is the main shutoff, so you can work on the sub panel without having to worry about live power. This is going to get replaced, and we're going to put in a newer type of setup since this one's a little bit old. There's only two circuits here. I was going to add some more, but I don't feel like messing with it since we're going to change it out anyway. All this is going to get reorganized as well, and I'm going to put the switches and plugs um, in a row nicely. So, over here we have the first circuit which uh, controls everything except the pump, and the second one is just the pump. Now, I have the outside lights on this switch over here. The inside light is a single bulb up here. That I'm going to remove and I'm going to install um, pot light type of thing so that we don't have a bulb sticking out. This switch controls the pool lights. I don't know if you can see outside. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. Is a little pool light on off. The other one is over here, and I'm still working on that. Now to the fun stuff. This is the motor contactor, or a relay, in other words. So we have a telemechanic motor contactor switch. And it's take the, the contactor is run by this plug here, which simply goes into an outlet. I may hardwire it in the future, but for now I just have it like that in case I'm going to take it out and move it around. Um, everything starts at the GFCI receptacle and then goes out. So everything downwind of that is GFCI protected. So if this trips, everything else trips. So that is what's powering the contactor. Now the pump itself is taking power from that circuit and I've attached the two whites well this uh, big heavy gauge cable had red and black so I'm using the red as the white and just keeping blacks with blacks just uh, so that it's not confusing <clears throat> and that's taking power from there and it's gonna be switched by those terminals now, I'm not actually sticking my finger in there um, over here because that's live power. I'm actually about an inch away, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, and then we have the indicator light, which is taking power from the, the, thing, the, the cord up here, which is powering the switch. So the switches are completely separate from the pump's power. Now, I have... A key switch here. So if the key is off, turn it off, and I press the on button, nothing happens. Only once I turn the key switch do I have power in here. And once I press the on switch, it is going to engage the relay with the contact. It's going to make contact, and it's going to turn on the pump and it's going to turn my indicator light. I have a Cutler Hammer stack light up here. It has the little sounder, but I disconnected it because it's it's useless. I just have the wires out there. We don't need a freaking alarm. I may try and wire it somehow that if there's ever like a fault or something that the alarm sounds or power failure, I don't know, something like that. But that's a whole other thing. <clears throat> so once I push this button, the relay is going to engage and then I have I've been take I took power from before the switch and I brought it into the other terminal over here and then brought it back around to the A1 terminal. So as soon as I engage it power is gonna come through and it's gonna circulate through until I break it somewhere else in the line, which is what the stop switch is for. 
So I'm going to demonstrate that. As soon as I push the button, the relay is going to engage, it's going to latch. The indicator light is going to go on, and then as soon as I press the off button, it's going to stop. Now, if I press the stop button, it disengages and it goes off. Now, I'm going to run it again, and I'm going to show what happens if the power goes out. So now, say this trips, or the power goes off. So we have a ground fault, the whole circuit is off. And I want to say correct the fault. Power comes back on, and this, it stays off, because the power has been broken. So only once I start it up again, it's going to go back on. Now, <clears throat> you may ask, why put this complicated system in here when it's really unnecessary? All you need is, I mean, a real little toggle switch like that, and you'll be good. And actually, that switch would be not so good. You'd probably need one like this that has a fast latch, because when you're doing this, that when the contacts come close to each other, they arc when they get about a millimeter or two away, and that destroys your switches, and it's not good for the motor either. Now, this type of switch, latching is very fast. Same thing with the uh, relay. It's it happens in a fraction of a second. So there's less time between those contacts closing. So instead of closing like that, they just snap together and there's little to no time for arcing. And I don't think those switches are really rated for that type of juice that this pump is pulling. It pulls a lot of current. I forget exactly how much, but it pulls um, quite a bit of power, that's for sure. So the, um, the contact here is rated for that high current so it can take that. These switches here have nothing to do with it. Those are just powering the first terminal, which have nothing to do with the left side of that. Those just close the contact inside, and the rest are just the switches. So <clears throat> as soon as I press that and they engage, the two blacks touch, closing the circuit and powering the pump. And the indicator light it's just I had it, so I added it. And same thing with the key switch. The, those two parts are really, they're not necessary, but I had them, so that's why I made it like that. This this whole box, I got it as it was. The only thing I really added was uh, these two switches. That's pretty much it. So maybe I might get a different enclosure, and um, I'll get a smaller indicator light and mount the buttons in the front, or something like that. And it's not a permanent installation. It's just I had the materials, so I went for it, and that's just what I did. So that might be an idea for anyone else who has a pump, if you want some sort of an advanced switch type of device, something that's a little original and more functional, this could be something that you can build. You can buy this motor contact, you could use the same one I got, it's a Telemechanic LC1K0910G7. You don't have to use the exact same one, but that's the one I'm using, it's a very good quality one, made by Schneider Electric, or Square D, or whoever the hell owns the company now, and um, you can use that. You can even use one uh, with 24 volts powering it. These buttons here, they actually have a 24 volt bulb in them, but I can't use that because um, I'm using 110 here. I'd have to run uh, 24 volts. So that's something I might do. Is I might get a 24 volt one. So instead of using 110 to uh, close the switch, it would be 24 volts. But then I'd have to mount a 24 volt power supply somewhere, and so on and so forth. What was originally here was this timer. It's an Intermatic uh, Spa pool timer. Never really used it. Doesn't really serve much purpose at this point. If I'm going to have a timer, I'm going to put in a digital one. But I mean, most of the time we just turn the pump on when we put um, chlorine in at night or during the day if there's a lot of debris in the pool and such. So. That's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions, comments, or know any more about this stuff, please feel free to let me know.